All right, good morning, comrade subscribers. Um, we lost one of you yesterday, but we gained one of you. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. So finally, um, we can take a look at this. Uh, let me turn that off. Maybe, yep. Oh, I might have to go out a bit. So the card co, card key one, numeric keypad for the Vic and the Commodore 64. Um, <clears throat> so now you can add the convenience of a numerical keypad to your VIC-20 or Commodore 64 computer. The accessory includes software driver program. On tape, can be copied to disk, but mine came on disk only, which has caused, caused some delays. <clears throat> um, that will allow the keys to be redefined to mean whatever you desire, including strings, functions, or commands. Uh, this system will work with most software, but... Uh, optional, not included, direct connection adapter will allow the, the keyboard to be used with any software package, including cartridges and protected software. So, yeah, I was, I was reading about this yesterday. I put a link, uh, I think Rick Rick Millick, on his website, one of his websites, <laughs> archive. Yeah, anyway, um, there is another Cardco product. Um that yeah i think i assume it basically instead of going by the the joystick port <clears throat> somehow replicates the, the keyboard here so that way you know to use it you need to load software but obviously if you're using cartridge you're not loading that software so it won't work so so that was why i started working on this because i could only get the software on disk so this one, this one in particular, throw the disc away. Um, so we've got Commodore and Atari. So it also works on Atari. I've not seen a disc with dual index holes like that. So a double-sided disc, pretty cool. Got the instructions. Uh, pretty much tells you how to, um, so the tape, comes with KBASIC and also card calc um, for both VIC and Commodore. So <clears throat> VIC on one side, Commodore on the other. So it's the CK slash one keypad. So unfortunately I didn't get um, the tape, I only got the disc, hence why I had to get this one because this wasn't working on the VIC 1001. The ultimate cartridge and and the SD2 IC, not happy on the VIC-1001, unfortunately. Um, yeah, also oh, keypad adapter, not in the box. Although the KBASIC program will allow the card key one to work with most programs, to use the keypad with some programs, mostly those on cartridges, you may have to use the Cardco CK-1A keypad adapter. This adapter, blah, 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 plugs directly into the computer's keyboard lines. Okay, which is what I thought. So the keyboard, so the key, keypad looks like the keyboard to the computer. One thing to remember is that when the adapter is used, the key definitions are those printed on the keys. Um, the keys cannot be redefined as basic statements or other symbols. Yeah, the adapter therefore. Um, yeah. So there's no special tools or equipment required to install the adapter. So um, the computer's cover must be removed. I've never seen one of those. That would be interesting to track down. Um, so using KBASIC setup, how to copy it onto disk. So this is pretty good. I have to admit, Cardco make pretty good products um, and they don't skimp on the documentation either. Well, apart from... <laughs> apart from the... Uh, Apart from the uh, <laughs> the Cardet One, which has no instructions, not just mine didn't come with no instructions, but there there are no instructions. Full stop. <laughs> so um, yeah, so especially like you know trying to figure out what's the record and what's mic. Anyway, so let's so this is the this is the actual device itself, um, keypad itself. Notice one thing is that the cord comes out from the right, so it has to kind of, I don't know. 
Would it be, oh, sorry. Would it be better coming out this side? Or is it better like that? I don't know. Anyway, keys are very nice. Nice, nice feel. Uh, shall we, shall we pull it apart? Let's have a, shall we pull it apart first? Let's pull it apart first. Okay, four Phillips heads, <laughs> not flat head, four Phillips head screws are out. Let's see. Okay, top comes off. Pretty simple. That looks like it's, okay, it looks like it's held in with double-sided foam tape. So I'm not gonna pull that out. But, um, pull the key off. Okay. So someone no doubt will know what type of key that is. Pull the spring out. Oh, okay, so is it, all right, so we've got the two leaves I'm making contact, and then this goes down and breaks, breaks the contact, which way did it come out now, okay, So make and break contact like that. Okay, makes sense. Okay, and we've got a whole bunch of diodes as per usual. A whole bunch of diodes. <laughs> okay. By pass, I don't know what's that character in the middle supposed to be. Is it an H or something? Anyway. So there we go, pretty long spring actually. I'll stick that back in. Actually, I don't know which way, I don't know which way the I pulled this out now. Of course, I pulled out the plus, which can go either way. Dumbass. So it's, don't pull out the, the minus, Brett. Okay, pull that out, so. Okay, so the little hooks, okay, so the little hooks go that way. Okay. There we go, back in. So pretty simple, there we go. Cool, all right. Let's put it back together and give it a burl. So I've actually got two of these. I've got one that doesn't have the case for whatever reason. Um, anyway, I'll put this back together. We'll boot up the software and give it a try. So quick look, so I've got my SD2 IEC, I've got the penultimate, and I've also got the power, and I've got it connected into there. So let's boot it up and see what happens. Okay, now I don't have, um, whoops, oh, okay. <laughs> that was me pressing X or times on the keypad. That's plus. <laughs> All right, that's minus. All right, two. Anyway, all right, so I don't have uh, Chris's VGA adapter installed on this one because I need to bring out the A14 and A15 address lines. So you're going to have to put up with this. Okay, so uh, let's go to F7. Okay. Now, I don't have GIF because I've got the two kernels in here. I don't have GIF. When I tried this yesterday with Jiffy DOS, it wasn't happy. Um, so I'm trying it without Jiffy DOS today. So KBASIC. Got D64. So there's KBASIC for the VIC. There we go, sys32453 to enable, okay. So this is where you can redefine the key. So at the moment, it's just defined for basically whatever is on there. So it's a four by four, hence why there's 16 uh, possible values here. So if we just enable E, enable and exit, or we could load new values. And I think that what 
that's what that keys is. So let's see if we go load new values. You go keys. I don't know if it's the sequence file. So if that makes that's going to work. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it has redefined. So nine. So I don't know. Save, run, list, data. Okay. So if we enable that, all right. So if we press one, two, there we go. All right, now. Okay, so that's the that's the multiply. Okay, that's the, the division. That's minus. Okay. And let's press that center. And then we stop us again. There we go. Okay, so it's it's pretty much working. What was it again? It was because <laughs> I don't think there's anything in there at the moment, is there? No. All right. Let's go back to. Oh, I'll just reset it. Let's go back to the menu. Sorry, I know I should know how to do this, but I, I, so I grew up on Amstrad. I don't. I'm not really up to date. Well, not. A, how to navigate around Commodore discs yet. Um, let's just go back to KBasic, let's load it again. Oh, I should have it in the manual actually, shouldn't I? So, SIS32453. SIS32453. Okay, SIS32453. Okay, so that's the default. Okay. I'll write this down here, sys32453. All right, so we just enable. Yep, so 10. So if I bring the keypad over. Oh, there we go. So let's well, say so we got 16. So 10 is, okay, so heading down from here. Plus 11, 12, no, yep, 12. 13 and then 14 and must be 15 I guess so if we just so that that um that setting was was quite okay with the data and everything so you imagine typing in machine code loader go data and then typing in all the numbers although you'd want a comma wouldn't you you'd probably want to redefine the dot as a comma maybe that way you can type in the number, comma, number, comma, number, comma, enter, and then go data. Yeah. There we go. So let's just enable the those default. And I think it's cleared it itself from memory, isn't it? Yep. Okay. What are, can we load it again? Um load is it load? Can we just do that? Instead of running it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's the actual program. Which is nowhere. <laughs> uh, Rick Malik, I think Rick did have it on his website, on the, which has been archived. But it hasn't been archived properly. So all of those characters at the start is all gibberish. So, okay, it's good to have the program there. So if we just run... There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. There we, there, there we go. 14, 15. And then we lose it. <laughs> we want to go back to see what it is. So, all right. There we go. So that was, a, I guess, a brief in introduction. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, what more to say? I don't know. Um, let me know if there's anything more to say about it. That is a neat peripheral. Uh, bye for now.